Good morning. Today is the third day of July in this 2023 year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The day is shaping up to be uh, nice. We have some blue sky with a little bit of a uh, morning cloud haze, which will burn off as the day goes by. Should be another warm day, uh, but that's the time of the year. I know today may be a holiday still for some. Uh, others may have had to have gone back to work after the long weekend. Uh, but as we prepare for the 4th of July, for family gatherings and uh, other activities, uh, I hope you do so with uh, safety in mind. Uh, as people around here uh, shoot off an awful lot of fireworks, and those are, can be pretty dangerous, but uh, to take good care in doing so and, in, and enjoy each other's company in this time of the year. Uh, I found a prayer uh, that Martin Luther shared and used and prayed to God before his examination before the, the Diet of Worms on April the 18th <clears throat> in the year 1521. And let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, what a strange cause this is. How it loosens people's tongues. How small and insignificant is their trust in you. How weak and tender is the flesh, and how powerful and busy is the devil, with the help of his apostles and the worldly wise. How quickly the world withdraws help, does not does an about face, pursues the easy way, and speeds on the broad road to hell, where the godless belong. It sees only what is brilliant and powerful, great and mighty and respected. If I should turn my eye to it, I would be done for. O oh God, O oh God, O oh my God, O oh my God, stand by me against all the wisdom and the reasons of the world. Do it. You alone must do it. It is isn't. It is not really my concerns, it is yours. Alone I have nothing to do with these great lords of the world. I want good and quiet days undisturbed, but it is your cause. It is righteous, it is eternal. Stand by me, O true and eternal God. I do not rely on human counsel, for it would be in vain. All that is carnal and tastes carnal falters. O oh God, O oh God, do you not hear me, my God? Are you dead? No, you cannot die. You are only hiding. Have you called me to this great place? To, I ask you so that I may be sure. God grant it never in my life had I thought to oppose such great rulers and never had to set out to do it. O oh God, stand by me in the name of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, who shall be my protector and defender, even my mighty fortress, through the power and the help of your Holy Spirit. Lord, where are you? Come, come, I am ready, like a patient lamb, to lay down my life for this cause. It is your cause and it is righteous. I will not separate myself from you forever. Be it resolved in your name that the world cannot force me to act against my conscience, even if I had still more devils. And if my body, which is first of all your creation, should have to perish, so your word and spirit come to my rescue, even if only for the body, and my soul is yours. It belongs to you, and may it remain with you forever. Amen. So help me. Amen. A reading from Matthew's Gospel in the sixth chapter. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, 
for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. The Gospel of our Lord. Luther's devotion entitled God's Holy Name. Although it's short, the Lord's Prayer is delightful and profound when prayed from the heart. Among the seven parts of the Lord's Prayer, the greatest part is hallowed be your name. Notice, however, that God's name is holy in and of itself. It's not made holy by us. God is the one who makes all things holy and makes us holy as well. So hallowed be your name means that God's name should be made holy in us. When this happens, God becomes everything and we become nothing. The, only, the other six parts of the Lord's Prayer point to the same end, keeping God's name holy. When we keep God's name holy, we do everything well. To learn how to keep God's name holy in us, we should first look at how it's dishonored and made unholy in us. Clearly, it's dishonored in us in two ways. First, we dishonor God's name when we misuse it to sin. Second, we dishonor his name when we steal it from him. To illustrate, consider a holy object at church. We can desecrate it in two ways. We can use it for human purposes instead of God's purposes, or we can steal it from the church. God's name is made unholy through misuse. Instead of using it for improving our souls and making us more faithful, we might actually use God's name to sin and damage our souls. This happens in various ways, through witchcraft, magic, lies, oaths, curses, and deceptions, which are all covered in the commandment. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Deuteronomy 5.11 In summary, we dishonor God's name we fail to live as God's children. And join me in prayer. <sighs> oh Lord God, you above all are holy and enable us to be the same when we hallow your name and hold you as precious in our lives. We do so, O oh Lord, by trying our best to be a reflection of your love and of your presence to this troubled world. Help us, O oh Lord, throughout this day to hallow your name and to be that reflection of you, the Holy One, to those around us. Bless us time in our nation's life when we are mindful of those things patriotic those things that are the glory days that brought freedom and justice to this land, a land that still needs that very same thing. For yet we have not arrived, O Lord, to uphold the principles that you have set for us as a people, to do justice, to be at peace, to bring righteousness to bear in the things that we do in the things that we say help us as a nation to grow stronger in our resolve to embrace your ways your more perfect ways that stand against our pettiness and our differences between one another that stands against the prejudices and the hatreds that are prevalent among so many O oh Lord, we shall not be a nation of God, a godly nation, until we can put to rest these things and we can see each other as blessed creations crafted in your image, perfect in your sight, 
Strengthen us, O Lord, in our resolve to work for better days ahead. Grace those, O Lord, that struggle in this land and throughout this world with injustices. Bring them your help. Deal you know, with the people of the Ukraine and surrounding areas that are still in war that peace might ensue. Grace, O Lord, those who seek health and healing and renewal for their lives. We pray this day for Evelyn Tompkins and Evelyn Rag, for, for Tom, Nikki, and Lisa, and Miriam, for Elaine, for Donna, for Nancy, for Linda Miller and Linda Danley, Jenny Slick, for Gail Legner, for each that we commend to your loving care this day, remembered in these moments of silence. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.